Hey guys, it's Ritz Tom from FTC Team 4717 and today we're going to be starting the Advanced CAD tutorial series. This series will assume that you have prior experience with Onshape um, and use with the tools. Anyways, to start off, we're going to be creating a folder for the um, Advanced Advanced CAD tutorials. This folder will be available to view in the description and all of the uh, files will also be in the description. So as you can see here, we are an advanced CAD tutorials folder. We can just click on it. And the first thing that we're gonna do is build a simple Mechanum drive base. Um, so what we're gonna do is create a document and just call it simple Mechanum drive. And we're gonna be utilizing top-down design in this um, drivetrain this um, um, and so we can click on the front plane just sketch and call it uh, skeleton or scale a scale is basically just like the overview of where you're gonna put everything and then you build off that skeleton and so the good thing about using a skeleton is you can change um, like if you change one thing then all of your parts will change and so that's the, basically the, um, that's what a skeleton is supposed to be um, and how you're supposed to use it. So as you can see here, we're in our front plane sketch. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is take circles um, and make them construction circles and just put them to some random dimension and then now dimension them to um, maybe 96 millimeters because the new GoBeldo wheels are uh, that big. We can put 96 millimeters right there. Um, and if we wanted to, we can make the wheels tangent to the this plane right here. So it's it just represents the plane this plane as the ground. So um, we can take this, do this, and that. Um, and so we can mirror this circle across this plane. So we don't have to create another circle and have another dimension because that that'll look ugly. Um, and so maybe we want uh, the end of the drive plates to um, stop right on uh, like the edges of the circles. So what we're going to do is just dimension from this side to this side. And maybe we want a 17 inch drive train. So put 17 inches and there you go. So the middle is at this plane right here would be at 8.5 inches. So as you can see here, we have our two wheels, and both the wheels are tangent to this plane here, representing the ground. The distance between the two is 17 inches, and we want our drive plates to end at the ends of these wheels. So what we have to do next is find a way to drive the wheels. And the way we're going to drive the wheels is with HTD 5mm belts. And so uh, we're going to use those because gears might skip, and um, chain is... it's kind of heavy so it's not the best um, so belts are lightweight um, so which is why we're gonna use them and we're gonna be assuming you use a 24 tooth pulley and so what we're gonna do now is go in this SPI SDPSI uh, belt center distance calculator and so for the pitch we should just select HUD 5 millimeter and then for the grooves we're just again we're gonna assume that it's 24 teeth on each and there we go. So next thing we might do is uh, put 60 teeth of the belt. So this is this number of grooves is how uh, how many teeth your belt has. So make sure you have a five millimeter HDD belt. It doesn't always need to be that. It depends on what belt you have. You can use an XL belt, which we use a lot too. Um, but for the HDD belt, we're just going to put 60 teeth, and the center distance is 3.5. And that seems a little small, so we might do like 75, maybe. Um, just so it's a little bit farther out and that's five inches. So that looks nice and a cool thing about this generator or this center distance calculator is That you can put your desired center distance. So as you can see we can put 7.5 and it finds the center distance with an HD profile um, From 24 teeth from pulley A to 24 teeth on pulley B um, It finds that closest distance. So here it's 101 grooves um, and so yeah, that's just a really cool part of the center distance calculator, and we will put this in the description for you guys to use. Um, anyways, we can take these uh, center distance, 
And so now what we have to do is draw a circle representing the motor. And so the motor um, diameter is 1.457 inches. Now you don't really need to um, draw the motor uh, circle, but I like to do it just to make sure that um, it's at the right, uh, like it won't hit anything like the ground. Um, and yeah, so what we, what we can do now is click on the center of this to the center of the wheel and then assign a dimension of that much. And there we go. And so now we can place the motor however we want it to. And um, one thing I like to do, as you can see there, it actually went in a circle. But one thing I like to do is actually take a circle and assign the center of that circle to the center of the wheel, and then go as far as it can until it um, attaches, attaches to the motor. And so this gives you like a visual of where your motor can go. Um, and so yeah, and so if I wanted to put the motor, say, um, like on the same plane as the center of the wheel, what I can do is I can take a construction line starting from here, going all the way across to here. It doesn't need to go all the way across, you can just go however much you want, but make sure it is parallel with the ground. And so I can do that, and then I can take the uh, coincident constraint and just click on that and that. So it'll stay on the circle because it's also coincident to the circle. So it'll find the intersection point between the two, which is a cool feature. Um, and now we can just mirror the motor across on the other side. And there we go. And maybe the circle too. There we go. Now, another thing that we might want to do to um, uh, make this drivetrain more stable is connect the both sides together with some rod or something. So what we tend to use are churros, so um, we can search them up on anti-mark. So you can just look at the distance of the, I mean, the di diameter of the churro. Um, and so it says hex width is 0.495 inches. So we're just going to put 0.5 inches because um, it's just a nicer number to work with. Um, and so we can put it on the same line that our motor and wheels are coincident, the center of them are coincident on. And so we can draw a circle and dimension that to whatever that distance was. Oops, so it's 0.5. So there we go. And now we might want to put it on the um, center uh, between this and this. So what we're going to do now is just take another construction line uh, click on the intersection point between the two lines there, and then click on the intersection here, and then just put a point anywhere on the line, and then take the midpoint constraint, um, midpoint, midpoint, and then just click on the point, and click on the line, and it puts it right there. Now we can just make this coincident with here, and yeah. So another thing we might want to do, just to make sure, even though it's most likely this won't be a problem, but just to make sure, we want to um, make sure that the belt won't hit the churro. So what we can do in this scenario is find the pitch diameter of the pulley. Um, so let's just look up 24 tooth, go build a HD 5 millimeter pulley, and just find the pitch diameter. So here's one. Um, um, so the pitch diameter, um, let me see, pitch diameter, oh, okay. so it says 38.2 millimeter pitch diameter. So what we can do here is again, draw a circle on the uh, motor and just make it 38.2 millimeters. And so as you can see, it's a little bit bigger than the motor. Um, so what we can do here, just to not confuse ourselves, is add a comment. So we can just right click on this. Um, we can add comment and we say this is the motor circle. And then same thing on the outer one. We just put um, pulley circle pitch diameter um, and then add. So So we can just click on the comments and it tells us. So that's a nice thing. Um, I'd actually never used that before. So 
that's pretty cool. Oh, it went away. But um, if we ever wanted to go into comments just to know which one is which, we can just say, we can just see. So now we're just going to take another circle, uh, construction circle, because this is a skeleton. And then take that circle, make it equal to the other one, so we don't have to assign another dimension. So there we go. But now you might be wondering how are you going to check if it's um, going to hit the churro. Well, it looks like it won't hit it, like just from um, like just seeing that you're going all the way across here and going all the way down. So it probably won't hit it, but if we wanted to check, what we can do is just draw another construction line going straight up from here, vertical, to and, and it, uh, it's going to be vertical to this axis right here. Um, and then going, um, or constrained to the pulley. So what we can do there is that, and then same thing here. And draw that. And so that will represent the belt. And then um, same thing down here. And yeah. Uh, yeah, there we go. So that represents the belt. And so um, if you had another thing, like just barely up here, what you might want to do is actually draw another line. So just take the line again, just a little bit above, and it's going to represent the belt, like three-dimensional belt. Um, so same thing right there. You take the arc, or actually you can just draw the other line on the bottom. Um, it's this thing, and then take an arc that goes from here. Uh, it's like that, um, and same thing on this side. So that actually represents the belt. Uh, it gives a good like idea of what the belt is. And then here you just put the thickness of your belt. I'm not really sure what it is exactly. I can just put like point uh, one, and then this one I'll put point one two, and there we go. And so. This kind of represents the belt, um, and it helps you make sure you're not hitting anything. So if we say we had like a bar like right here, like uh, somewhere right above this, if we just drew this bottom line, we wouldn't know. But it's because we drew that top line, we know now. Anyways, that's the end of this video. Um, we we basically just created a skeleton of the drivetrain itself. Um, and so actually one other thing we might want to do is just mirror this churro across and everything else maybe, um, even though we don't need to, but it would be nice. So let's draw this, this, oops, I actually did the wrong thing, but it's okay. Um, okay, there we go. Okay, so we got everything um, done. And everything is black, which means it's fully constrained. It cannot move unless you tell it to move. Um, and so, yeah. Um, one thing I did not like about uh, what I did was make it constrained with how the center of this. Because um, that's like, you can only have it in one place. Uh, what I, other thing I could actually do is just, um, oops, I deleted it. I got mad. But what other thing that I should have done um, is just have a dimension from here to the bottom, which kind of represents um, um, like how high you want it on this circle here. Because um, if it's just vertical, the center distance will be off and the belt will be super tight, which is bad. But having it co coincident to the circle allows it to um, just be uh, like have the correct center distance as well as be able to go up and down. So that's it. Uh, that, that was good. We got through the skeleton part of the drivetrain, and now we just have to put the motor holes, make the plates, etc. So thank you guys for watching, and have a great day.